hey beautiful people welcome welcome back again to the channel it is Del here and i am your captain so today we are going to be doing q a six months in australia update so if you're just seeing my face for the first time welcome to my channel i'm a registered nurse who recently moved from the uk to australia and yeah i am going to be answering your nosy questions now mm, i'm pretty sure you must have seen the part one if you've not I'm gonna leave the link in the comment section so you can watch the part one part one of my life here in Australia after six months was just me ranting but now today in fact it's the same day anyways you can tell the same hair the same clothes the same position <laughs> I'm just gonna be answering your question and some of you went really deep mm. Mm. but anyways what is life of a youtuber without getting nosy questions but let's answer those questions. I'm going to start from my YouTube because you guys are the real MVPs, okay? Those of you only on my Instagram that are not subscribed yet. What are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button. But yeah, let's go to the questions. Okay, my community people. Okay. I'll start from the first one. So the first question I have here was very detailed. Okay, thank you so much, Jimmy. I don't know if I pronounce your name very well, but please forgive me. Thank you so much for this question. The question here is a lot of questions but let's start available good agencies for work so i've done lots of videos on that i'm going to leave it in the description box for nursing agencies you can work with them and experience as a nurse work place atmosphere vacation and sick time so let's take it one at a time workplace atmosphere it's been great it's amazing my workplace is one of the best i've also worked in but if you've seen my previous video, you understand what I mean. It's good. It's okay. Okay. No complaints. No pressure to leave. No pressure to go out or no pressure not to come into work. I actually love coming into work. The patients I've also met, they'll all be nice and very nice. I promise you. Most of them are British people. Most of them are Asians. Most of them are from other places of the world. All the Australians I've also made, they are very amazing people. So I have no complaints about my workplace atmosphere as well. The colleagues I work with, they're all, they're mostly, not all of them, but I think, yeah, most of them, they are mostly immigrants as well. So we always have this beautiful experience asking them, how was your own country? How is life here in Australia? There's always something to talk about here at work. Okay. So amazing workplace um, atmosphere. Vacation. Yes, I am already going on my Thailand vacation. I've also gone to Queensland. If you've seen my Queensland vlog, you should know. Vacation here is more than what you might get in the UK. This is because we already have four weeks of vacation compulsory. And if you do more of nine shifts, you get, they call it, I don't, I've forgotten the exact name they call it, but there's something like adding of hours, like making up your vacation time as well. So if you do more nine shifts, your hours is being added up. And if you've worked, more bonuses like more over time i think you also have more hours added to your paid time off so yeah the annual leave is amazing so the more you work the more hours you accumulate okay so you accumulate those hours i'm also going to thailand for almost two weeks so you can tell it's been also paid time off when i went to queensland also paid time off so it's been great okay vacation time is good sick time not as great as the nhs if you are in the uk here sick time is i think you only have is it five days so the sick time is not as great as the uk here you only have five days in a year sick time off any other time you take off if it's not your normal off days you are not going to be paid time off you just you can if you're sick you see you can come in of course but as well any year you don't take that sick time off it moves to the next year okay so you just have to bear that in mind but it is what it is the sick time is not that great as compared to the uk but there is a i don't know i don't know for other states so every state is different so in new south Wales, our nursing union is currently fighting for them to increase the five days to 20 days so fingers crossed that comes into play very soon but i'm someone that doesn't really take time off that much okay but of course as we age and as we progress in life 
our body is not always the same so it will be great to know that if they increase it from five days to 20 days i will love it so yeah that's a sick time for for me so i don't think it's the same in every state or i don't know if it's the same for private look australia is one country that every state has different rules so if i say this please realize that it is for new south wales always check in the state you're going to before you conclude the case what i'm saying now is what is applicable to me in new south wales and in my employer every employer is also different okay so please check as well okay uniforms like we wear scrub i work in theater so i wear normal scrub the scrub provided by the hospital but if i do agency shifts i wear my own scrub i have different colors of scrubs and the uniforms for people working in the world i think it's they have their own uniform they have this navy blue they wear and i think it's provided by the hospital because they have the hospital name on it so i don't know i don't work in a place where i have to wear hospital uniforms i wear scrub in hospital like in the theater and that's provided by the hospital but i do have my own scrub when i go work agency or when i go to the nursing home i have my own scrubs okay patient care what do you mean by patient care it's good similar to the uk i work in anesthetics one to one if i go to do agency shift usually one to four one to, not very few times i've had one to four one to five or one to six okay that's in the world but we are fighting for a better ratio again here in new south Wales to make it compulsory one to four fingers crossed that comes into play as well but in states like victoria states like queensland is currently one to four but we all know there's always nothing shortage so even though they say compulsory one to four i've heard people still in queensland complaining that sometimes they get one to five but just bear in mind that australia's nurse patient ratio is much better and the unions here are very strong with implementing these rules that's one thing i love about the nursing here in australia so charting not schedule charting here is similar to the uk most places i've worked is online they have pixies you know the one where you have to scan medication out from the box before you administer it i've never had that in the uk please let me know if you've had pixies i don't know if you know people know what pixies is so it's just like it's a scanner you have to it's not the one you scan patient name scan the wristband no when you want to take medication out of a drawer to give to a patient you have to scan it out so it registers from the system so it's not a case whereby you go and give patient medication and the system doesn't know the system knows what medication you take out which is really good very safe and if it's not due you already know okay so it's very safe i love it okay there are still some places that use paper chart like some nursing homes still use paper charts and even some private hospitals here that works they still use paper chart which I find okay because then you don't have to learn a new system see even if you use computer all the times every software is different so i don't mind i'm not fussy about system or not system i'm okay okay because it does take me a while to get used to the computers whenever i go to a hospital where they definitely use systems so it's not too bad and uh, prn how flexible is prn for nurse schedule i've also done a video about that we work mostly six to eight hours very rare you see 10 hours or you see 12 hours mostly in ed in icu or private hospitals they do that but usually six hours eight hours and then if you're working full time you have to do um five days in a week okay so yeah you can't have 10 hours you can't have 12 hours you just have to negotiate but usually what you see mostly here is six to eight hours okay okay so how flexible is prn so it's just like every other place you can go prn um, you can go part-time if you want as well you can reduce your hour you can, you can go part-time if you want as well so yeah that's it about flexibility and just realize that there's always jobs one thing with nursing there's always jobs okay so even if you say you go prn if you want to still work as a full-time person you would definitely work as a full-time person because they will always call you in renew rn license here and new zealand is it worth keeping rn license in new zealand so i'll be honest with you my license for new zealand has elapsed and i have not renewed it that's because i don't need it at the moment and if ever i want to work in new zealand i just have to transfer it again just to renewing of license like i'm registered there i'm registered there okay there's no point renewing the license when i don't have any plans of moving there tomorrow okay it's there anytime i want to start working i just have to pay the fees and they will activate my license back and as long as i'm working here in australia it's very easy to move between new zealand and australia as a nurse okay so that's not even part of my problem the only problem i have right now is my 
UK license is still active and I'm thinking mm, after this year I'm just gonna cancel it and if I ever want to move back to the UK which uh, <laughs> might not happen but if I ever want to I just have to renew the license which is still be easy okay it's just like return to practice or just transfer back your license because you've been working in Australia look these three countries they're all all intertwined okay so you wouldn't have any problem okay is it worth keeping it depends on you do you have extra box to just spend to renew license when you know you don't need it at the moment you have to decide that for me for New Zealand one was a no-brainer it was very easy I just didn't renew it anymore but for the UK currently it's still ongoing maybe at the end of this year I'll decide what to do with that okay all right how often is the rent increased within the year here in Australia so I've only been here in Australia for six months and they have not increased my rent this is because I have a contract with my current landlord and it's very hard for them to just increase rent when you have a contract with them I don't know if they increase rent every year but I would assume they do but for now I haven't experienced that okay any incentive for medical professionals regarding buying properties or any rental kind so yes I'm gonna do a separate video but there is a scheme here in Australia I think I've already made a video and I talked about this I'm gonna leave it in the comment section where I talked about if you're buying a property here as a permanent residence your first time the government I don't know if it's every state don't quote me but here in New South Wales the government gives you a certain amount towards your first home I think like 10,000 or 20,000 I'm not hundred percent sure at the moment but I'm gonna leave it on the screen so you can read as well but the government gives you first time home buyer money you don't have to pay this money back as much as I know towards your first home but it must be your first home so if you've gotten a property any other place in the world you are not qualified for that it's towards your first home and you must live in that place for a period of time i think at least six months or one year i'm not sure again but when i'm ready to do that video i'm going to give you more details but yes there is a good incentive about ten thousand or twenty thousand towards your first home here in australia okay i don't know if also depends on how much the house will cost so maybe to a, a certain percentage but when i was checking it i think i saw ten thousand twenty thousand but yeah that's it okay the next question public transport frequency at nine for those who do nine shift the public transportation i warn you is not as great as the uk okay and it also depends on where exactly you will be here in australia so i am in sydney the transportation is good i haven't needed a car for six months now if you watched my previous video i did mention this as well and when you go to some rural areas you might not survive without a car so research more on where exactly you go to okay not australia as a whole but where exactly you'll be i where i work i catch one bus to work okay train station is just four minutes walk from where i live so i've never had any problem with transportation public transportation so yeah you have to just check where but i know that there are lots of people that live in more remote places and they cannot survive without a car so next question yeah so the buses frequency you can get the train moves every five ten minutes like the train in my house here yeah, five ten minutes to most destinations for the buses it do take a while like for me if i miss my boss here i will have to wait for like 20 minutes to get the next one okay and also depends on where exactly you're going to so if you're going somewhere that is very far then you know that yeah it will take a while but yeah like i said just make your research yeah that's it so thank you so much all those questions were just asked from one person and i hope i've been able to help as much as i can the next question everything about child care for working class nurses especially on night shift i don't know i don't have a child i was speaking to my friend who has children here and she's a permanent resident she said the government gives her some money for her child like child upkeep but she still works as a nurse now that is i couldn't understand the whole thing but she called a particular percentage of how much they give to her and it was okay it was very very much okay and if you live in australia for a while i think for employers they'll say one year you get paid maternity leave if not the government if you've lived in the australia for two years you get government support so the support is there but you just have to know if you qualify for it okay and for the child care it depends on where you live so some people pay 80 some people pay 100 i don't know it's it's just varies on if you get someone that will be able to help you if you have a partner that people can switch things up like one person is at work with the other person at home or you get a friend that is willing to look after your child for you but i don't know the exact figures i'm sorry i can't give you the figure because you know i don't have a child yet okay <laughs> but yeah 
work-life balance between the uk and australia i'll tell you the truth both countries has amazing work-life balance but the australia's work-life balance wins in the sense that you don't really have to do extra shifts to be comfortable in australia that is one thing that australia just wins above the uk and also the weather see when you talk about work-life balance you can't enjoy outside if it's too cold if it's freezing i don't know for you people for me i'm speaking based on my perspective look at me it's very hot okay the aircon is on because it is hot i can easily go for a walk i can run i can come back from work i go to work seven to three i come back from work it's still very bright i can take a walk i can run in the evening okay i can come back i can cook without feeling so exhausted i can clean i can like you know the day is not gone by the time i come back i still have a lot in my hands to do i can film videos i can call my parents we can talk for a long time that work-life balance is there okay but in the uk i know when i was doing the long hours but to be more specific when i come back from work that's it even after my three long days the next day i still have that day to recuperate from the whole stress of the three long days especially if i do three in a row so i'll tell you for a fact that both countries are great when it comes to work-life balance annual leave both countries amazing but when it comes to work-life balance in general i feel australia just has it because one the weather is it allows you time to go out you can go to the beach you can you know it's there and the work time is amazing as well when i come back i don't feel so exhausted okay also with, with the uk the one good thing about the work-life balance is i can hop on the train and i'm in paris i can go on the flight and i'm in spain that's one thing i love as well but here in australia you already know it's very far from every other part of the world the most you can do is go to the beach around which they have lots of beaches so you will never be bored or you can go to the next state which you still have to use flight most of the time but yeah that's one thing i just say about the work-life balance it is great here okay another person asking rent when it comes to rent we pay rent every week or every two weeks depends on your landlord or what you people agreed um i pay mine every two weeks so yeah what do you want to know about rent for me i found out that the rent here is cheaper than what we were paying in the uk and this is because one this is more central it's more close to the city but where we're in the uk like the last house i left was more remote so if i am to move to a remote area right now i will pay even lesser than what i'm paying now and here it's it has more amenities than what we had in the uk more spacious as well so i feel like the rent here is a bit more better than in the uk and somebody asked about real estate i've not gotten any property here yet so i'm not the best person to tell you about real estate but one thing i have heard or i've made my research about is that real estate here especially if you get a property here in sydney and you are renting it for profit it is one of the best things because there's housing crisis you already know there's housing crisis here so your house will be always sold out okay if you, especially if you put in airbnb you would make so much money i promise you okay so yes if it's for real estate it's one of the best things to jump on if you are a business-minded person okay the next one is racism uh, unconscious bias for racism i would say this is my personal experience okay because when you talk about racism i always want to say somebody might be in the same country the same with someone else and that person might experience racism the next person might not so when you ask me i will tell you my experience i cannot tell you the next person's experience except i see a very obvious racism like maybe i'm walking on the street and someone is getting killed or someone is being shouted at someone is called f words or you know those racist slurs are being used in my front like i'm seeing it and then i can say oh my god this country is so racist i can say that but i cannot just say the country is racist because someone has told me she was treated bad i mean i get it your experience is valid but i've also experienced someone just overreacting and i'm not trying to downplay racism okay please don't get me wrong but i'm just saying my experience as well like you can have problem with someone at work or per se and the person reacts that doesn't exactly means it's a racist reaction okay except the person used to, i mean you can you, you can say it's racism for you but personally if i look at it outside oh you did something wrong yeah someone will be angry with you okay it's not because you're black for me my perspective because if you do that to me as a black person and you are black as well i might still react okay i don't know if you understand the scenario i'm trying to paint but most people would just pick on anything any white person does to them and say oh you're being racist to me while i get it that yes there are some instances that you might experience that 
I'm still saying that sometimes we overreact and I've had instances where people will be like oh your hair is so beautiful where did you make it or does it hurt can I touch it I don't feel bad when people do that to me especially when like they come to me ask before they touch my hair but I know a lot of people that get angry for just being asked oh your hair is looking good or your hair is different today or just something about your hair can I touch your hair, your hair is thick your hair, your hair is thick or just something but I get it your experience is valid okay but personally I haven't experienced any racism as of yet six months into Australia but my patients both at work but going to buy something interacting with the locals here I've not experienced racism and it was worried to know that I am in Sydney Sydney is like being in London it is very diverse I know that there are a lot of people that will say oh they are in rural area and in remote area it's not the same but it's not my experience and I don't see the news about people being killed here in Australia just for being black or somebody being stoned or like I've not seen those kind of thing and until I see it I wouldn't say same of Australia I don't know if you will understand I just don't want to be saying things out of oh it's very racist but I haven't experienced it I've not seen it happen in my face okay so I've not seen it I've not experienced it but there is definitely racism everywhere and I would still like to say that even when you are back in your country there's something called tribalism and it is the same with racism let's be honest Igbos don't want Yorubas to be the president Yorubas don't want the Igbos I'm not even Yoruba I'm not Igbo but ah, it is draining okay so I'm like I'm also in a country where I'm minority the only time I had a voice was when good luck Jonathan was president he's from my state so that was the only time I had a voice in my own country and coming here and i'm not seeing those things and i'm like i'm happy okay so when it comes to racism it's not my problem okay and even if i ever experience racism as long as you don't spit on me or as long as you don't put a gun to my head and say you black girl or you you know i'm okay okay i will just leave when i need to leave or i will just smile and leave and look at it as a normal bad day that is how i've built myself so if you build yourself like every little thing a white person does or someone not from your african country does will get to you then you can't live abroad that's just it you have to learn to close the door shut the door when it's time to shut the door and just do your job and go home at some point okay but yeah it is not as bad as some other country there are some countries like a black person cannot survive but australia is not that kind of country so do you regret moving instead of waiting for your IRR? I've already answered this question in more detail in my last video so please check that out but the simple answer is absolutely no. I will tell you the truth. Sometimes I'll be like oh it's gonna be November. Okay. I moved to the UK September 2019. I, I get it. Sometimes I'm just like oh my god this year September 2024 I would have been able to apply for my IRR and then if I waited 12 more months I'll be able to apply for my passport. Uh, I was like, ah, it's closed. Why didn't I wait? I mean, and then I will now look at it on the brighter side and I will be like, anyways, you're here already in Australia, you have your permanent resident, right? And then you are just like three more years to get your Australian passport. Then I'll just shake off that that thought. Ah, dear, you don't regret it. Say the truth, you don't regret it, but you know, human needs we are insatiable. Sometimes you be like, you want to be greedy, you want to have everything. But for me, I am happy I didn't wait to get my alarm. Okay, so some of the questions are repeated question work life balance. I've answered real estate. Are you very interested in real estate? Okay, I think I will look for a way to start doing some videos on properties here in Australia. Let me know if you'll be interested in something like that because I had that mind, but I didn't know if people would be interested in those kind of videos because you know. I just moved to Australia and I don't really have so much Australians watching me and I don't want to do a video where people in the UK are not interested in what I'm watching because my audience is mostly based in the UK okay so let me know if you're in UK and you want to know more about real estate here in Australia and I'm happy to do that videos so long awaited salary comparison I promise if you will I will do it when I come back from Thailand I will do that video I promise okay I'm still uh, uh, the same person the same question okay Please, Nazir, can you elaborate on the housing crisis in Australia now and states that I have affordable housing with job opportunities? Is Adelaide a good place to live with kids? Okay, so I want to say yes, there is housing crisis here in Australia, but you will definitely get something. Especially if you come here as a permanent resident. I only got my place one week. You already know the story. I've said this story a lot. One week and I'm still here. Okay, so when it comes to housing crisis, it depends on the location. If you go 
to a more remote area i don't know how it is it might be better i feel it might be better than here in sydney because here is city and most people want to live in city okay so it's quite crowded but if you go to remote areas you might get it better and it's definitely cheaper for states i cannot say because i've only lived in new south wales but on google if you ask people people always say adelaide is very cheap it's not like very cheap okay but it's affordable anywhere outside sydney is affordable because Sydney is the most expensive let me not lie okay but yeah when you go to any state just make sure you're not in the capital okay so if you go to south australia make sure you don't stay in adelaide if you go to um western australia avoid perth okay those places will be more expensive than if you go further that's the only thing i would say opportunities it depends on your profession and it depends on what kind of jobs you are willing to do if you are a specialist if you are a nurse if you're a doctor you always get a job you anywhere you see even in the forest as long as people are living there for nurses you get a job okay every other job depends on exact profession okay people have been complaining that the job is going down but i assure you you still get a job okay as long as you're willing to do whatever i mean not anything whatever but yeah of course when you move to a new country you don't expect everything to be all green 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 you especially if you didn't get a job before coming you're gonna suffer a little but you'll be fine <laughs> okay so there are jobs opportunity for the house and just make sure yeah for living with kids i don't have a kid yet so i feel like even if i say it i have not seen it from my own personal experience but just what my friends tell me or what i read on the internet living with kids people have said places like pets i mean it's good people have said adelaide is also good just make your research okay i know people always complain here in sydney because of how expensive it is to get a house that will be comfortable for you and your children also queensland people have said states in queensland brisbane and any other parts of queensland is very affordable but make sure you make your research okay and know because most places here in australia every state is different weather is different price of things is different time zone we have different time zones as well one pet is like four hours behind or above one of them i don't know but four hours difference from yeah i think we are four hours ahead of birds okay so just make sure you make your research and be sure where you're going to okay so can you talk about life as an aesthetic nurse in australia and possibly job opportunity for one's partner so i've done a video about my job experience in my last one so please check that out probably when i do a more updated video i can talk more on anesthetics nursing but it's similar with the uk like i said okay next question in comparison with the uk having stayed six months in australia would you say you made the best decision okay i think i've done this i've answered this question so i'm not going to answer it again and what you said is i am a doctor in the uk considering if it's really worth it <laughs> <laughs> dr sandra please come okay i don't know how much you earn particularly if you are a specialist doctor or whatever i'll give you a clue i have seen how much doctors earn in the uk you're gonna be making double of that here if you're a specialist say you are a gp you are an anesthetics anest anesthetist anesthetist <laughs> if you are a gp you're a psychiatrist come if it's for the money you can't even put a price on it if it's for the money you're talking about income savings yes you're gonna have more you're gonna save more <sighs> if i talk about money i feel like people feel i feel a little bit uncomfortable talking about that but yeah that's just it okay what type of jobs are there for dependents and are they readily available there's no job waiting for you to just come and pick except you apply for it before coming okay but your dependents will get a job what kind of jobs depends on what kind of job you want to do it depends on the profession depends on your job your qualification but there are so many opportunities as much as i know especially if you live in a good city a good environment there's always job opportunity you get a job you will not struggle so much you won't you wouldn't live here in australia for months without a job that's one thing i guarantee you especially if you're not picky you're willing to do whatever you see until you are able to get your dream job but i can't say specifically if i don't know the exact job you're asking okay the next question here says can you work full-time and still do masters full-time in a nursing degree so the question is can you be able to sustain yourself working full-time full-time here is like 
40 hours a week or 38 hours one of them I, I don't even know anymore and then you have to school full-time full-time here you have to take four units okay i'm currently studying part-time i tried it and it didn't work for me it was just too much bear in mind that i am with a permanent residency so i don't have any visa restriction on how many hours i must have to work and school okay so you have to check your visa rules as well so the answer is you can but it's very draining it's very stressful coming back from work and studying for full time Mm, gonna be four units i would not advise because i couldn't do it myself but of course by all means if you can afford it if you can do it do it and if your visa allows you do it okay so yes you can but circumstances differ are there african stores here in australia yes they are okay so i have also done a video i don't know if i've posted that but i was able to get good meet here in australia which i posted a tiktok video about if you follow me on tiktok you already know and you have the african store but you have to be sure where exactly you're going to be living i've had friends in tasmania complain that there are no nigerian stores there i don't know how true is that but that's what she said that she cannot find any nigerian store there but here in sydney there are lots lots of them ghana store nigerian store uganda name it you have all of them here in sydney okay and the next question is how can you change your driving license from uk to australia so i've done a video already i've changed mine since i came back like six months ago so i'll put the video on that the comment section so you can see so yeah you can do that it depends on the state you are currently in and i think that's it for youtube so let's go to instagram okay so instagram questions how do you find living in australia without family or friends i have my husband here <laughs> It's the same when I was in the UK, I was with my husband, so I miss my family, okay, my mom, my sisters, my brother, I do miss them, but it's the same with the UK, so there's no difference, okay. For my friends, I do miss my friend, my best friend has just given birth and I'm not there as the godmother, which I find very hard for me, but it's fine, it's life, it's part of life, you grow, and I haven't made any good best friend here, I have a friend, but... I wouldn't say she's now my best friend i still keep my uk best friend as my best friend as of now so we talk and you know yeah life goes on so that's it about that mm, life is good with my husband here other families it's hard but it's similar with what i was used to in the uk okay and as we go on i'll probably make very good friends here how do you know if a department can sponsor you to specialize how long are the shifts for icu icu usually is 12 hours but you have to check that with the exact hospital but most of them i've seen all of them i've seen is 12 hours specialized you will be pushed to go to your, do your specialty course specialty training you will definitely be pushed most of them here they want you to get degrees they want you to get certificate they want you they love it okay and they will sponsor you so yes yeah, so many opportunities Okay, can they do top up this BSc program for nursing in Australia? Yes, I've done a video already. Have I? Have I done a video? No, I've done so many videos that I don't even know which I've done and which I've not done. But yes, they are top up programs for RN to BSc. Here they call it EN. So yeah, ENs can go over to do um, BSc. So yes, you can do that program as well. Okay, next question how hard is it to find an apartment i think this question is similar to what i've already answered so i'm going to skip that it is hard but i got mine in one week okay ah juicy question how high is their tax so i've done a video as well comparing uk tax and australia tax so check out my comment section i'll put the links there i don't want to be repeating these things okay how is day to day grocery shopping similar i have done a video i found grocery shopping some things are higher in australia some things are higher in the uk okay so it depends on what you're buying but i have a video already in my channel i spend hundred dollar for i am a husband every week for groceries here in australia sydney to be more precise so yeah it depends on what you are eating and i still have my african food stuff so hopefully that gives you a little bit of idea as well that i got from nigeria while coming to australia i don't know if that helps okay now can a new grad work in icu rather than regular med surge unit i want to tell you for a fact that it's very hard if you have med surge experience in in the uk and coming over to australia it'd be very very hard for your employer to give you icu i'm very honest with you it's possible but very hard even the people that graduated here in australia going straight to icu here in australia is very hard most of them have to do a graduate year in icu before they can work in icu okay so that's similar 
it's very hard i won't tell you oh it's very easy even if you don't have like even with me when i was coming remember that i only had like when i started my whole process when i got my first job i only had like six months an aesthetic experience and then they were telling me oh if you're coming here you're going to work in cardiac unit first before we can transfer you to anesthetics and i was like no i'm not going to do that and that was why i stayed a little more if you remember you remember the gist right yeah i've already done videos on this but yeah it's very hard to go into specialized area here in australia so i'll tell you if you can and you are able to get it in the uk get it before you come here so when you come here you're coming to your specialty because the world is hard mm -hmm. okay next question why did you choose australia rather than us or canada um, I choose Australia because I can only choose one country at a time. I can't be in Australia and I can't be in Canada I can't be in US at the same time. I choose Australia because it aligned with my personal goals at this moment And so far, I don't have any regrets. I am loving it. My husband is loving it And that's all that matters to us right now. I put all the countries I think I would love to live and for me Australia stood out for me so that's why i moved to australia i've also done why i moved to australia so maybe check that video out with that video you can tell why i didn't go to the us or why i didn't go to canada okay yeah i think pretty much these are all the questions asked i want to say a big thank you to all of you asking all these questions it means a lot to me and i hope i've been able to answer your questions if you still have any questions let me know in the comment section i'm happy to help but this is it for me this is my six months q a and hopefully i'm able to do this in the next one year again two years update three years of as long as we live i'll keep updating you all but this is it thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys later like subscribe if you're here too and of course follow for more turn on your post notifications so you get notified and don't forget we are going to thailand oh. yay see you now we are going to thailand oh. <laughs> anyways i'll see you guys in my next one bye